Hey, I'm the Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to F1 2020. This is last question mark. The My Team Experience. And we're on episode number seven. We're still in season number one, but we're definitely pushing into the downhill side of that. Our new parts have been completed without issue. They'll be on the car ready for the next race weekend. And we've got three days to fill here. We're going to go ahead and take the arrow. Got some new parts going on in the car, so excited by where we're at with uh, things going forward. Welcome to Budapest once again for another round of the Formula One World Championship. Historically, a good race for first victories with Button, Hill, Alonso and Heike Kovalainen all reaching the top step of the podium for the first time here. 14 corners then for our drivers to navigate at the 2.7 mile Hungaro ring today. It's six lefts and eight rights around a lap here, with average speeds in the region of 120 miles per hour. All right, so we're in Hungary, the Hungarian Grand Prix. Of course, real life Formula One, we're just there this last weekend. Definitely not the excitement that we had in Austria as Lewis Hamilton dominated from the get-go. The only excitement was where he came in late for soft tires and went out and crushed the lap record and easily claimed the victory. The field itself didn't have a lot of excitement either. There weren't too many passes. A lot of it happened through pit stops. And honestly, the most exciting part of the race was the intermediates at the beginning and the incredibly wise, wise move by Haas, game changer for them to come in on the formation lap and pit for slick tires and start the race from pit road under the appropriate tires to have on at that time, which they greatly benefited from when everybody else pit a few laps later. Now, for us, and for myself, we're coming off my first points uh, paying finish that we've had. And so that's awesome. Following that up is going to be difficult because I've only managed that once so far. So suddenly expecting me to score in every race is probably asking a bit too much. This is one of my better tracks, though. It really is. But it's also a track that I think takes me a handful of laps to get the feel for a few of the corners generally in practice not heading straight into the race we only have the one long straight and we're on it now so the double drs is nice though it'll be it'll make that a little easier uh, to make some passes so let's see what we can do with that we're at the hungarian grand prix let's go racing i'm all the way up in p19 with a large number of all the way to the grass to get by, but we do. P19 with all the penalties in the field. Oof, Stroll squeezing me out there. And we're up to P12! Wow! Okay. Little contact with Stroll there. A little payback for him squeezing me out, I guess. And we're already into the points. We're into the points. It's P10. Holy cow. Oh, gosh. I just got shoved. Norris shoved me off the track. That's a decent start. Good job. Got to go wide there to avoid Norris. Lose a lot of ground, but that's okay. I'd rather have a little breathing room at the moment back out of the points, but I do solidly believe that we can get up there before the end of this thing. I have one position to go. Save myself a nasty wreck there as I got on the gas a little early. Definitely overshot a couple corners here. Max Verstappen leads through the first lap, it looks like. Norris taken to the inside of the track, that's fine, we'll pass him on the outside. Great maneuver, you made it 
quick and easy. Back up in the P10. Ricardo next on the list. Let's use overtake and burn some of this energy. Up to the ridge mix as we prepare to head to the front straight last couple corners of the lap here. A little squirrely on the exit there as I'm trying to set myself up for this run. Right, we need to get past here. Use overtake. Use overtake. DRS is being enabled this lap. We can use DRS. Okay, big gap behind us, so we're good there. And in the DRS zone. Should have it. Right here in a moment. We're increasing our gap on the nope. behind by around Apparently the next lap. It's one of my better corners when I get it honed in. I tend to gain a bit there and go nearly flat out through it, but uh, overshot the chicane, lose the ground that I had made up on Ricardo. The dirty air didn't Engine help, but that was mostly. Signs of wear. Power output will be down. Let's catch back up. Going to the rich fix now. Purple sector one. Definitely down on sector two after the mistake in the chicane. Caught back up to Ricardo though. BRS, overtake, rich mix. Can we get him under braking? Ah, shoot. Missed my braking zone. Still pushing here. Forced him out through the chicane, and then just make the corner. I lose time on everybody else, but the overtake is complete. So it's lap four. We're gonna have to try to spend the first part of this lap catching up. Um, it would come down to the chicane if we're gonna get any higher, but we are in P9, so turns out we are able to go back-to-back -back races in the points. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. We can stop worrying about Ricardo. A lot of ERS. There's just not as many places to use it. We'll try to use it where we can. Fuel's getting low, so. Okay, we're monitoring somewhere on the ICE. Be aware that we will start to see a loss of power.
checked everything before the race, we were actually pretty good. They're just on that edge of where. Purple Sector 1, Green Sector 2. Can we get the fastest lap bonus, maybe? Finally close up Kavia here, but it's a little late. Good result. Ninth place. But once I kind of got into position, it was really hard to move up. So, so much of that came down to the start of the race. Really, I mean, that was from the start to turn one. Yeah, going into the grass worked the for me. Didn't one, work for Daniel Ricciardo last year. To take victory here in Christian Horner celebrating, so it looks like Verstappen hung on to the win. I believe he was leading after lap number one. What do you think it was, Ant? Excellent result in P9. Couple more championship points. Not that third point that I was looking at hopefully getting for the fastest lap. You can see the two Mercedes and the Red Bull all were quicker than I was. And actually, both Ferraris just a little bit faster than myself as well. So I was sixth quickest out on the track. It was quicker than one Red Bull, Alexander Alman, who just only managed a 7th place finish. Teammate Jack Aitken really starting to show his stuff too. So quicker than both Williams and Alpha Tauri, Alpha Romeo, and surprisingly a racing point, Sergio Perez. In real life, of course, the racing points were pretty quick at Hungary this week. So now 14th, still the same place I was, but a couple points higher. Uh, just two points behind Ocon, just four points behind Kvyat, five behind Stroll, so I'm very much in the mix against some of these drivers. Botas down to a 12-point lead after finishing third with Hamilton second. Verstappen probably too far back to really challenge. I think he's realistically going to just be challenging the two Ferraris and trying to beat them out for third place. As a team, we go from nothing to six points in two races, and we've closed up on the AlphaTauri a little bit, so we'll see. I think that's definitely who we're going to be battling it out with for the remainder of this season. We're in Belgium once again for today's round of the Formula One World Championship. It's a race the great Ayrton Senna won six times, and in 2019, Charles Leclerc became the first driver to take their maiden win here since Michael Schumacher in 1992. Spa-Francorchamps today, a circuit that spans 4.35 miles. There are tons of elevation changes along the way too. 19 corners making up this circuit, with nine of those to the right and the remaining 10 to the left. This track is a great one for fans of pure speed. The average lap speed comes close to a whopping 145 miles an hour. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. A couple things to discuss before we begin with the famous Arden race here at Spa, but I find it interesting that Schumacher was the last one to claim their first win here before Charles Leclerc last season. Did not know that little tidbit, and here's the thing, I don't like Ferrari. I am very much the anti-Ferrari Fan. I'll support anyone before I would support Ferrari, literally any other team on the grid. I full on think that they cheated for a long time with their fuel mix. And I do believe that their struggles this season have been 100% related to whatever secret agreement that they had with the FIA to keep it hush hush to not get in any actual trouble but to quit doing it. 
and I think that's why they are so far off the pace this season. Vettel has nine points after three races, if you haven't noticed. Leclerc, though, I think is an amazing young talent. I think he is already far superior to his teammate Vettel, who might have been great at one point, but is not that now. Not even close. And I I do think that that if Racing Point, aka Aston Martin, take him on, it's going to be a huge mistake and it's going to be costly to that team because they have a driver who has improved a lot in Lance Stroll. But obviously, he's not going anywhere. And I actually don't think Sergio Perez is among the best drivers in the field, not even close. But I think that Sergio Perez is a better driver than Sebastian Vettel at this point. Personal opinion. And with that being said, we're here at Spa that at least in the F1 2019 game, Monaco was the hardest track to drive because you have to be inch perfect. But I think the hardest corner or sequence of corners in the F1 2019 game was the corner prior and the corner following and the corner of Eau Rouge in itself. That left, right, left is by far the hardest corner to master in F1 2019. And it's not about getting it right. It's about getting it right and still having grip. Because I fought for hours in practice to get the balance right to have enough grip through there because of the the drastic arrow changes through that quick sequence of downhill quickly transitioning to uphill and then just after that cresting where then continuing uphill but that that rapid change I would lose traction so many times I've spun out through there more times than anywhere else on the entire of the entire year combined so let's see if we can get through five laps without adjusting setup without seeing it and let's see uh, in general the F1 2020 cars do seem to have a little more grip as long as you don't get too hard on the gas too quick coming out of corners. That's a flat out sequence so we'll see if we can uh, maintain some grip. There are definitely opportunities to pass following that as you have a very long straight and a long DRS section that as in real life it's so hard to win the race from the front row as you get an incredible toe coming through there but with that we're in spa for the technically the second half of the season started a long time ago but so many people consider coming out of the break and into spa the real second half of the season let's go racing back-to-back -back races in the points what can we do now Literal last place. Another good start, though. So much easier than last season. Russell, though, walks me off quick. Boy. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's clean. It's clean. P20, but I'll take it. We're up a couple spots. Uh, this is going to be tough, though. I'm coming up on Raikkonen pretty quick. Oh, touch the wall. Man, things are getting squirrely. Okay, that was actually pretty dang good. All right, here comes my teammate, Aiken. He's got a better toe than I've got. We're using a lot of ERS already. Of course, I did not raise the fuel mix on that at all. Coming up on a spot that in 2019 I can make a lot of passes right through here. Now we're up to P18, or are we? Roshan's still on the outside. 
about somebody you want to be side by side with in the modern F1 car. We complete the pass though, up to P18. run. Too good of a run. Oof. Little touch there as we go for the pass. Sorry, Russell. Very little. Whoa, 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 whoa. That entry through there makes a really difficult section. We got the ERS back up. Stroll to the outside. P16, pass complete. Rich mix. Gonna get a run this time. I think we might get Giovanazzi. Had to get off the gas though. Through the braking zone, we'll get him. Still there. Second part of the chicane, we got him up to P15. Fairly clean race so far, too. No flashbacks. Uh, didn't take Magnus into the outside, though. I didn't realize I was already at my happy corner. Best, pl best place to pass. Another run. Wow, way too quick. Oh, really? Not pleasant to get turned around there, but okay. P14. Well, we've got a chance at the points today. DRS will be enabled this lap. You can use it when within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Wow, that was close. So many close calls. Mm -hmm. Take on DRS active. Got a definite run on signs, but what can we do? Up to P13. Bad run there. Gonna make it really hard to make it overtake on this corner. Oof. That's also a really bad run. Ah! Okay, fine, take me out. You definitely did not have position on me there. Let's go back to here, huh? Not enough to get a run on Ocon. Back in. B13. Still. Use your overtake button more, it's time to utilize some of this energy. Don't worry, we will soon. We'll get a run on Ocon up here. Got the move done before we even did the turn, which means we can now get a run on Kvyat.
the fastest lap of the race. Keep this <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Okay. Big mistake there. Big mistake. Costly, costly. Ooh. Okay, you know what? I was gonna stick with it if it wasn't for that penalty. I was planning on keeping that. For one, I thought I had a pass done. I thought I had a pass, and then... Just light damage, and I was gonna lose one position, and instead I was losing all the positions and taking a three second grid penalty, which did not sound like fun. So, we're up to P8, uh, P10 instead. Disable, let that run on a little long there. All right, here we go. Perez. Oh, way too late, way too late on the brakes, trying to go around Perez there. Okay, I'll take my warning, that's fine. Purple Sector 1, by the way. Little gravel. Pushing a little too hard at the moment. run there though. Not going to be good enough though. He defends to the inside but it's too late. I already got him. But can I get around this chicane? Oh! Oh! Go from here. Too much Kirby, he's still there. Can we squeeze him out? That's complete. I get a warning, but. Final lap of the race. Albin's next, he's only an eighth. Okay, I'm gonna start our run. Okay, we should at least get Alvin here, which would be P7. Ooh, saved it. I was only halfway up there, it was my bad. That was not his fault, that was my fault. On the exit. Oh, come on. Okay, you need to give that position back. That was an illegal overtake. I, got, I just exceeded the track limits there. So, it's going to be a little harder now. back, underneath him. What collision? We call that a collision? For P7. Or P8. Why are you saying P8? Why well, eighth? He was eighth. I passed him. Did I have a penalty? The three second penalty we didn't take. We went back in time. I passed the eighth place car. I'm very confused. Why am I in eighth? Fantastic race it was. Uh, okay. <laughs> and look who wins. See, this game makes me put my foot in my mouth. Last time I said something about Vettel, he performed really well in that race, too.
Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans. I did the pass game. the car that was in eighth, win. correct? World class team. Ferrari, do it again. Now, I had two warnings in that race. They gave me a three second penalty on that turn one incident, but I went back. We reset. So that collision never happened. We used the flashback to avoid that. That's why I reset that. I was going to take it. I was going to accept my fate on that until I had the three second penalty. I was going to take that damage and go with it. So I'm very confused at the moment. All right, so that is P8. Albin was eighth. I was ninth. That's right. I move up one more spot. So I get eighth place, but that is how many races in a row now? Three races in a row in the points for a combined total of 10 now on the season. Really coming along. Really coming along with that. And that's a 1-2 for Ferrari. Because in game, who has the best engine? Yeah, Ferrari. They haven't adjusted that. They tweaked Ferrari and knocked him down and made Mercedes the strongest car overall. But they didn't lower the engine. You know, if you ask me, this is where I would place the four engines right now after watching the first three races of the year. Watching all nine practice sessions and all nine qualifying uh, sessions and all three races. If you ask me... I would say that the strongest engine by a few horsepower is Honda. Yes, that's that. I believe Honda has the best engine by just a few horsepower over Mercedes. Five or less. It's really close. I would say a distant third and fourth are the Renault and Ferraris. Renault, it's really hard to judge where exactly they're at but I think there's a significant gap and I'd say those two are probably neck and neck on horsepower right now Ferrari claims in interviews that they are not down on engine power but they are struggling for grip I don't think they are I think they have struggled at times for grip because they are going for power and relying on the fact that they have good aero and chassis. But they're turning it way towards that end where they're maximizing what they can get for the engine. But the engine's just not there, which is why they've got it setup wise to the extreme. And so they're not getting the most out of the car. I think that a place like Monaco Ferrari would do really well right now. I think the reason why they were more in it in Hungary than they've been was because it's the most downforce heavy track there is and less reliant on your pure horsepower, which is why they were more competitive and why Haas were more competitive. Yes, they got to the front because of a smart tactical move. But Magnussen stayed in the point, despite the Haas being a terrible car this year. That might be the only points they score all season. I, th I do think that Ferrari is being coy with everyone in the interview saying that their aero package is horrendous this year to try to deflect from the fact that they are just down on power. Because Speed Trap, Ferrari's been 17, 18, 16, 15. They, they've been at the very bottom every race. So Speed Trap-wise, I think the Speed Trap is revealing. And it's not what they say it is, but I think they're just trying to deflect attention away from them getting busted There you go, Botas with a 9-point lead over Hamilton, Verstappen 79 behind, Leclerc ahead of Vettel, ahead of Albon, and I am 12th place now, 10 points, having a heck of a season here.
Things are going really well. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Kathleen Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. And if you want, if you agree with me, leave a comment below. I know that Fettel has a huge fan base, and so my opinion is not popular regarding him. But let me know what you think about the engines. Am I on to something? If you haven't noticed, Red Bull's been pretty quick, and you saw how well they were in Austria. I think Mercedes this year is in a league of their own and the only reason why it was close those first two races in austria is a you've got a world-class driver in max verstappen but b i think that honda engine's a little more powerful than we give it credit for maybe it's not a few horsepower stronger than mercedes maybe it's a few just a few horsepower weaker than the mercedes but i do think those two engines are the quickest this year let me know what you think below See you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. And bye for now.